Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. I know it's only July of 2019, but guess what? Campaign 2020 is now in full swing here in the state of West Virginia, especially when we talk about the state treasurer's race. Joining us right now is the incumbent Democrat treasurer, John Perdue. Good to have you on Good the show. Ahead. Good to be here, Mark. Thanks. You, six terms. I mean, you're, you're going to wrap up with 24 years uh, in the treasurer's office, and you want another term, an unprecedented seventh term. You're the longest treasurer in the state's history. Why do you want to go back uh, to the treasurer's office? Well, I love the job. I love what we have done to build the uh, treasurer's office, and I call it the People's Bank, the Bank of State Government. And uh, what we've done with that and modernizing it and bringing it in the 21st century and really putting uh, professional people in charge of the bank and state government. CPAs, accountants, and people that need to be running the bank, just like a local bank that you go to, uh, the, uh, uh, as people go to in their, their community. Uh, that's what our bank is. We're very personal. We like to be your personal banker, and so, so to speak, in, in state government. And what we've accomplished in the, the 529 plan, the college savings program, I'm very proud of. It's 33,000 West Virginians in that program, a $2.6 billion program, growing and getting bigger and bigger every day. Mark. Let's talk more about that. What exactly, for those who, who, who aren't aware, I'm aware of it because I had just put yeah. two kids through college and, the, and my accounts were very important in doing that, but what does a 529 account do for parents and families, and uh, especially when they start at a very young age, and why is the state involved in this? Well, we got involved with this when I was uh, in the NAS and the National Association of State Treasurers. When I first got elected treasurer, uh, I saw that a lot of states were starting Smart 529s. We were getting the passed on the federal level. Uh, we're in West Virginia, every state has a Smart 529 college savings program, and we was able to get that started in West Virginia, and it allows parents to be able to save for their children and grandchildren's education, and they get a dollar for dollar tax deduction on their state income tax, and uh, that says a lot right there. And they get able to set that money aside, and the flexibility of the program, if your child or grandchild doesn't end up going to higher education, uh, you can move it to another child or grandchild. And so it's a very flexible program. It's a chance to make money that is tax-free, so to speak. You never have to pay any taxes on that money, as long as it's used for educational purposes. And you can go anywhere in the world to school, anywhere, any state, anywhere in the world. We want you to go to West Virginia uh, here in school and use your Smart 529 plan here. But we have a lot of people go out of state. So it's, it's a great program, a great way to invest and give something back to your children and grandchildren that you may not even be here, but you left a great gift for them in a Smart 529. I know you count this as one of your biggest accomplishments while in office, while as treasurer. The other one is the, uh, what is it, the unclaimed or lost property fund. Explain what that is, where the state finds property that should rightfully be returned to taxpayers and you get the money or the property to them. Well, uh, absolutely, unclaimed property. When I became treasurer, I found $100 million laying in the treasurer's office that was the people's money. When I found out it was the people's money, we, we was able to get a law passed in my first uh, session of the legislature, uh, the Uniform Unclaimed Pro Property Law. We started making it what it really should be and trying to return the money. We modernized that. We put it on the internet. We started t going out and finding these people uh, that's, uh, that couldn't be found. An unclaimed property can be anywhere from uh, lost uh, checking accounts, uh, CDs, uh, bonds, uh, life insurance policies, as you well know, recently here I had to go to court to be able to make sure that the life insurance companies were returning uh, the, the, when they couldn't find the rightful owners of those life insurance policies to unclaimed property. And, and so we returned millions of dollars every year. We've returned $209 million total since I've been treasurer to the people and businesses and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, 4-H clubs, all different kinds of uh, unclaimed property. I'm down to about 45 seconds. I know it's kind of a meaty question, but one of the things you're the biggest involvement right now is the medical marijuana banking program. Where does that stand? I know there's been some hiccups in the process, but are you confident we're going to get a, a legal banking system in this state to handle all the medical cannabis payments? 
Uh, you know, I'm very confident that we've taken our time to cross the T's and dot the I's. People who know me know uh, in the Treasurer's office, I want to make sure that, that we have all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed. And we've had worked very hard on this to make sure that we get someone that can do the banking part of the medical marijuana. And that's very important. Yeah, that touches all of us. And uh, I travel the state of West Virginia. I get people walking up to me all the time. Uh, wanting the medical marijuana because they know that their parents, grandparents, or aunt or uncle or someone can use that. And uh, we hope to be able to get that accomplished very soon here. We're out for uh, the, the bid. I can't say much about that. And I think it'll be taken care of pretty soon, the banking part of the medical marijuana. All right. We want to thank Democratic Treasurer John Perdue for joining us. We're going to hear from your opponent, Riley Moore, the Republican. It's going to be quite a race. It's going to, 2020 is going to be an exciting year in the state of West Virginia. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, sir. And we'll have more of Inside West Virginia Politics after this break. Don't go away.